An Olympic mindset is a mindset that is globally competitive and is capable of becoming a dominant player in this industry. If I gave you a million dollars, that doesn't make you a millionaire. Being a millionaire is a mindset. If I gave you a million dollars, you're just a human being with a million dollars. The proof you're not a millionaire is that that money will not last in your hand. Wow, so how can one develop that Olympic mindset? Very powerful question. Jim Collins helps us and God helps us even more. Jim Collins says, you're not likely to have an Olympic mindset in something you struggle. There are people that know what you don't know, but they know it because they know it. If you know it, you do what they do. By the way, nobody anywhere in the world is better than you. The proof you have a God-given talent for something is that you can be among the best in the world in that thing. If you come from heaven, you're not a prophet. You will not become one on earth. Don't try to be what you're not. Be what you are. Because you are not likely to become an Olympic player if you are doing something you are struggling with. Nobody has a mindset that doesn't need to change. What does it mean, therefore, to develop an Olympic mindset? It means to have a mindset that is capable of being the best in your field of human endeavor. So guys, once again, we have John C. and Elama here beside me. Like I said, the video we are doing is a series. So this one is going to be on developing an Olympic mindset. That's what we are going to be discussing about. Once again, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, hit the subscribe button, turn on the post notification, and share this video with someone. So sir, what can you describe about developing an Olympic mindset? What does it mean to develop an Olympic mindset? I think it would be proper to start with saying what is an Olympic mindset. mindset. Okay, yes, what's an Olympic mindset? And to define an Olympic mindset, we have to say what is mindset? Mindset is a mind that is set. Each of us has a mind that is set, a mindset. Our mindset is our system of thinking that has been produced over time. Nobody rises above their thought level. Your mindset is made up of your thoughts, your thought patterns, system of thinking. There's a way you're thinking right now. The way you're thinking right now filters all the answers you offer to all the questions that life throws at you. The way you see the world is not the way the world is not the way the world is. The way you see the world is the way that you are. And the way you are is your mindset. As a man thinking is that so is it. So at every point in time, there's a mindset. In fact, it's so profound and so powerful that the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of your life. That word issue means boundaries. It means the extreme limit of your life. It means the city limits. Nobody lives beyond their boundaries, the way you reason. So if I say poverty is a mentality, you say how? I will explain that and I'll come back to mindset and we'll go. So, if I gave you a million dollars, that doesn't make you a millionaire. Being a millionaire is a mindset. If I gave you a million dollars, you're just a human being with a million dollars. The proof you're not a millionaire is that that money will not last in your hand. You don't have the skill. You don't have the skill to keep that money. You can't even multiply it. You don't even know what to do with it. What will you do? You go and spend the spree because you're not a millionaire. But if a millionaire has a million dollars, that, a million, that one million dollars to him is worth 10 million. If you ask him to give you money, he says, I don't have. He says, but you have a million. He says, no, you don't understand. That one million is $20 million. I can't give it to you. If I give it to you, chop it. If you leave it with me, it becomes $20 million. It's a mindset. So, what is a mindset, therefore, is a mind that is set. Minds set by what you are seeing, what you are hearing, and what you are associating with it to shape your life. The reason education changes people's life, it changes their mindset. A doctor becomes a doctor by doctoral doctor set, doctor mind. If you sit in a medical class for six years, you have the mind of a doctor, become a doctor. Mm. If you sit in an engineering class for five years in a college, in a university, anywhere in the world, whether you met first class or third class is not important. If you hear it, go to classes, you have a mind of a, an engineer, you become an engineer. And if it's in a practical environment, you become a practical engineer. So mindset is a mind that is set. Your mind sets by what you hear, what you see, and what you associate with. Your life cannot change unless and until your mind changes. In fact, God says, 
Let me change you into a new person by changing the way you think. The way God changes us is by changing the way we think. And the way God changes the way we think is by changing what we are hearing, what we are seeing, what we are associating with. So, that's a mindset. So, what's an Olympic mindset? So, look at the origin of the Olympics. Olympics is was built on the Isthmus Games of Paul's day. Paul grew up around a place called Isthmus and they were games. So, when Paul was writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, Know you not that they who run in a race run all, but only one receives the gold. He said, Run so that you might win the gold medal. By the way, in that time and that era, the prize you won for winning the race is a ref made with palm fronds from the palm tree. It perishes. It perishes. He said they do it to win a crown that perishes, but we do, we run the eternal race of life. He was comparing living the Christian life and, and running the race of a Christian life with eternity. So he said that, you know, he was comparing the Olympic, the Isthmus games of his day with the Christian life. He says that the Christian life, you win an eternal prize, but the Isthmus games, you win a ref that perishes. So they do it to win a crown that perishes. But we're running a race that the crown does not perish. Now, the Olympics was born out of that. What do we know about the Olympics? In the Olympics today, which happens every four years, you have the rings that's, that show the five continents of the world. I think there are five instead of seven. Just check out the rings of the Olympics. It represents, each of those rings represents a continent. It's competition among the continents now. The thing about the Olympics is that only the best of the best of the best come to the Olympics. In the finals of the Olympics, for example, in the world of athletics, they say race or 100 meters, only about eight lanes are there. So the finalists are eight out of over 244 nations of the earth. Eight countries compete. Sometimes, they, so even more than one country has more than one person. Sometimes America will have three people. So that means that the countries are not more than four. The whole world, these are the best of the best. So it means that only the best go to the Olympics. And only the best of the best wins an Olympic gold. And somebody gets the bronze, somebody gets, somebody gets the silver, somebody gets the bronze. First, second, and third. Now watch this. What does it mean, therefore, to develop an Olympic mindset? It means you have a mindset that is capable of being the best in your field of human endeavor. Mm -hmm. The mindset that is capable of being the best in your field of human endeavor. In fact, in the book Good to Great by Jim Collins, when he starts talking about purpose, how to find your calling in life, he says there are three things. Number one is that you are doing something. You have a genetic code for, something that you have a God-given talent for. And he says the proof you have a God-given talent for something is that you can be among the best in the world in that thing. Then he says number two is that you are paid for doing that thing. Then he says number three, you are passionate in that passion inside out you are passionate about doing it why am i saying this can i put it another way god said to jeremiah before you were born i saw you i knew you before you came out of your mother's womb i separated you and i did you a prophet you know what that means if you come from heaven you're not a prophet you will not become one on earth don't try to be what you're not be what you are so if you're going to be globally competitive, you can only do it in something you have a genetic code for. Something you have a God-given talent. Something that comes to you naturally. Something that is almost like a hobby. But however, it's a mindset. But I'm saying that if you're going to be Olympic standards, because they have to go together. So somebody says, how do you develop an Olympic mindset? I have three examples that I like to talk about. They're my case studies. Okay, one is the Nigerian 1996 Olympic gold winning team in the soccer, in soccer category in Atlanta 96. Okay. People like Okocha, Finide, Mwankwo, they were there, Babayaro, and many other players, Amokachie, um, um, there was a gentleman, I'm trying to, Uchi Okechiku, and so on and so forth. They were, they had two goalkeepers. I'm trying to remember their names. Now listen, that's one group. Number two, the US Navy SEAL, C air and land teams of the U.S. Army, mostly from the Navy. Number three, as a gentleman, he came to Nigeria in 1998 with a briefcase. He lived in Nigeria for 41 years. He left in 2019. He was born in 1934. He left at the age of 85. Fortunately, unfortunately, he passed away this year. 
His name is Richard L. Kramer. He brought two organizations originally, Atto Anderson and Anderson Consulting. But over his lifetime in Nigeria, he became part of many great organizations. Lagos Business School, the progenitor, the precursor to um, Pan-Atlantic University, um, the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, Harvard Business School Association of Nigeria, um, at, at African Capital Alliance, and many other organizations was a part of. How can somebody who came in with a briefcase enter Nigeria in 1978, leave an alumni network that is more than maybe 12,000 people, produce five cabinet ministers, left behind globally competitive organizations of which he either chaired or founder or co-founder or very involved with the Olympic mindset. So how can somebody develop an Olympic mindset? First, understand the concept of mindset. There are many mindsets out there. Dr. Dwork, who is a professor at Stanford University, talks about the growth mindset in her book, Mindsets. So he's talking about fixed growth. They are not the only mindsets, but her research focused on that. So there's abundance mindset, there's poverty mindset, there is Olympic mindset, there are all kinds of mindsets. Now, if we zero in an Olympic mindset, let's first define it. An Olympic mindset is a mindset that is globally competitive and is capable of becoming a dominant player in this industry. It's, a, it's thinking, but it has to be tied to ability. Because if God does not give you the God-given ability to play soccer, you will not achieve Olympic status in soccer, no matter how much you try. Because that lack of ability will disqualify you. Because there are things that must come to you naturally. You can't learn everything on earth. So, for example, Pele of Brazil, who played his last soccer in 1970, when they lifted the trophy that year, they said of him that he understood the coverture of the ball. He was so talented in soccer. He started playing at 16, 17 and played from either 1954 or so till 1970. He played about four World Cups. He is a living legend. Just like Jeji Okocha, Kanu Wankwa. These people understand the game. They understood it before they even played for a club. There are so much talent in them. So how do you develop an Olympic mindset? Wow, very, very powerful. You have to understand the process of change. The process of change of mindset is hidden, it's hidden in a scripture that looks, that looks negative. In the Bible, in 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 um, Matthew chapter thirteen, verse fifteen, it talks about. It says that these people's heart are wax gloss, that they don't want to change because they don't want to hear me, they don't want to see me, they don't want to be converted in their heart, they don't they don't want to understand with their heart and be converted that I might change them. It looks negative. That tells us the process of change. How do you change the way you think? Because you have to change your thinking before you develop an Olympic mindset. The way you change your thinking is by changing. Listen now, very powerful. What are you hearing every day? What do you read? What are you associating with? Do you hear long enough and listen long enough until you understand with your heart? And then there is conversion of you and then the results. So most people want results in life. But they don't understand the process of results. Results don't just happen. Results happen because there's a shift. So God says, let me transform you into a new person. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. By changing the way you think. That's New Living Translation of Romans chapter 12 verse 2. He so don't copy the behavior of this world. Don't, 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 don't do it. Say, so let me transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So you cannot change until there's a change. To, to change the way you think, you have to change. To change, you have to change what you're listening, what you're hearing, what you're associating with, because that's all you're meditating upon. That's why Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why should I think? It's what you see, you think. It's what you hear, you think. It's what you're associating with, you think. So to change what you're thinking and how you're thinking, change what you're seeing. So you have to read and read and read and read. You have to listen and listen and listen. If you're auditory, you read, you listen. You have to read, read, and read, and read, and read. If you are visual, you have to read. You have to find your strength. If you are locked up in traffic, don't just stay there. Turn your car, your car into a school. Plug in the tape. Listen to the tape. Don't go to a meeting. Don't ever travel without books. Whether it's your device or physical book, 
Don't go anywhere in life without what to read. You, once you are waiting for somebody, pull out your book. Don't live an idle life. By the way, your time is your life because God created time to create life. When you're wasting time, you're wasting life. When you're killing time, you're committing suicide. If you don't invest your time, you cannot reach your full potential. So you have to be a reader. Jesus asked the Pharisees who were troubling him. They came to him, they said, can a man divorce his wife for every cause? He said, have you never read? You're asking foolish questions because you don't read. You don't go to seminar. If you go to seminar, you expand your knowledge. Listen, the way, reason why you should expand your knowledge, the reason why people go to business school, it's not whether you graduate on top of the class. Mm. It will change your mindset and you will never be the same again. If you go to school, if you go to a college mm. and the college goes through you, whether you make a third class or first class is relevant in life. It's only amongst people, oh, first class, that's it. What matters is that school goes through you. If it goes through you, you will produce results in this life, not according to your certification. So to develop an Olympic mindset is first, change your mindset by going through the process and then you have to go the extra mile to make sure that in this life you're not doing something you're managing because you are not likely to become an olympic player if you are doing something you're struggling with you cannot if you don't know how to run you can't compete with them um, usain bowles usain bowles was a natural sprinter but then he worked hard he couldn't be the champion just because he's working hard he has to work hard on an area where he has a talent he found that he had legs that could run and then he applied pressure on himself. He used to drag weight to train himself for capacity. Drag weight to train himself for, what do you call it now? Um, another word, endurance, persistence, and so on and so forth. So to develop an Olympic mindset is an intentional, deliberate effort. But first find your area of calling in life. Then change your thinking by changing what you're reading, what you're seeing, what you're associating with. And then now make up your mind that I am going to be the best in what I do. I'm going to go to, it's a choice, it's a decision. I'm going to go to the Olympics of my calling in life and be then willing to pay the price because no shortcuts in life. Every shortcut will cut you short. Mm. Now, do you think uh, leaders are made or they are born? Like, if, I want, if I'm doing a particular skill or a particular thing, do you think those particular sets of people, they are made that means they grow themselves into it or they are born for it. Like you mentioned, uh, Usain Bolt, sure. Do you think someone can actually train like him or someone has to be born like him? It's both. If you train like Usain Bolt and you don't have Usain Bolt's talent, you never become Usain Bolt. There is a basic talent he was born with, God-given talent. He ran. Everybody runs. Nobody Before he trained, he ran and found he runs fast. The training made him faster, but it's not the training that made, him, made his legs fast. Hmm. He had a gene in him given by God that cannot be manufactured by man. Hmm. Leaders are both born and made. They are natural talents. Some people have natural talent. They, they generally... Haven't you seen children having meeting now? Somebody's leading at the age of seven. Where did he get the leadership skill? He organizes people. It's given by God. But that person will need to go through training to lead at the highest level on earth and in life. I, 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 I come from a diverse family. If there is a measure for leadership, people have different leadership abilities. My immediate elder brother was born with leadership talent given to him by God. He's naturally a leader. He's a good follower, but he's naturally a leader. Everybody's not like that. People have met people with natural leadership ability. But leadership is also a skill that can be acquired on earth. But I can tell you, the greatest leaders on earth will be both born and made. Hmm. Now, how do you describe someone with a healthy mindset? Because it, a typical someone will say, I have the right mindset, I'm doing the right thing, I know I have the right mindset. How do you describe if you see someone with a healthy mindset or a bad mindset? How do you, what practical things that you can you use or step or what, what would I call it that can, you can use to describe someone with a very healthy mindset? What I say about mindset is not fixed. Everybody has to grow throughout their life. Nobody has a mindset that doesn't need to change. So you say you have a healthy mindset, what does that mean? You, you don't know today what you know tomorrow. So your mindset will change by knowledge. So you have a good mindset, keep changing. Okay. I would rather talk about growth mindset. A growth mindset is a mindset that is committed to growing throughout its life. A fixed mindset is a mindset that thinks 
the, the, whatever I was given out in life is the end of life. Therefore, they are trying to manage themselves. They work too hard. They are hiding their weaknesses. They are ashamed of failure. When they fail, they don't talk about it. It's fixed mindset. A growth mindset said, I, I tried to drive. I couldn't drive, but I'm learning to drive. A growth mindset doesn't define so much of results. It's effort. I'm working hard. They don't say, I can't drive. They say, I'm not yet driving. Mm. So you have to put on a mindset that is humble, simple, willing to change, malleable, easy to be treated or easy to learn. That's what you need. That's what is a healthy mindset. Okay. It is said that Africans are usually backward in mindset. Do you, can you confirm that to be true? There's nothing like that. Nothing like backward in mindset. There could be environment that is backward. Mindset. Can I say something to you? My immediate elder brother went to Harvard Business School and graduated with high distinction, top 5% of the class. What is the backwardness? I have friends who went to HBS, several of them. How did they get there with backward mindset? No, there's nothing like that. Yeah, because that's one of the reasons why they said Africans are not developed, or they call them third world. Why no. they call the West first world? No. So why are they called third world and the West like first world? Because they're not developed. But they're not developed because of lack of mindset. Africans are some of the brightest people on earth. I've lived in Boston. In Boston, they have Harvard University and Ivy League University. Listen, there are so many Africans in their business school and their Kennedy School of Government that is scary. So many, not just Africans, so many Nigerians in those two schools every year. Even in their School of Public Health, so many Nigerians. They don't get there by accident. When I was in about 25 years ago, I started going to South Africa. My childhood friend, Dr. Ejie Kanyamu, he lived there. I met him there when I came on my first visit. And because he's my childhood friend, I spent a lot of time with him in the Pumalanga area of South Africa. They had medical exams people take to qualify to practice medicine. Nigerians were smashing those exams so much that at some point they banned them from taking the exams. Wow. In fact, when he took me himself, he took me to the headquarters, I don't know what they call it. Some of the vigilators for the exam, some of the professors were Nigerians. There's not like a backward mindset. So it's development about mindset or about the environment? It's both. It's both. You need an environment to practice your mindset. And you need mindset to develop your environment. So it's why both. is Africa not growing? Like Africa West. is growing. Africa has not yet reached where it should reach because there are a lot of things that take Africa backwards. In Africa, somebody can become a leader that is not among the best and the brightest. In America, you can become president by accident, you could become president, yes, but the system will eject you out eventually. Mm. In Africa, you can even perpetuate your, your stay and be there for 40 years, 20 years, 7 years, 8 years, and, and whatever. The point I'm making is that when you say West, 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 how old is West? The West is older than Africa, not in terms of age of the earth, in terms of development. Dubai developed to what it is today in less than how many years? Because they made the commitment. There are many organizations in Nigeria that are world class. World class. They are globally competitive. That's the proof. The problem is not Nigeria or Nigerians. It's the environment and leadership. There are many organizations that are globally competitive. Nigerians are globally competitive. They have Nigerian medical consultants, medical, medical consultants, doctors all over the world. I mean, medicine is not a world where you're winning prizes. It's just a world of research and work. I'm just saying that Nigerians don't have a mental problem. No, it's not a mindset problem. It's not a mindset problem? At all. Okay. It, is, it is the environment. There are environmental factors. They, 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 corruption is an English word, but they've taken it to new levels. And the price of corruption is much heavier than people understand. Wow. Now, there are so many unhealthy things people hold on to. Like people hold on to unhelpful beliefs and thoughts. Sure. Some people hold on to things that are not particularly helpful to, to themselves. Sure. Some people hold on to bad relationships. Some people hold on to things that doesn't progress them in life. Sure. And what are the practical things you can say that can help someone to break away from these unhealthy things that is keeping people down when it comes to mindset? I, I, when I teach, when I interact with people, I say to myself, I say to my children, biological, spiritual, and I say to people in seminars around the world, I say to them, commit to lifelong learning. Never stop learning. You don't know all you need to know as of today, and you're not yet the best version of yourself. The man that God created, the woman that God created to fulfill the destiny he gave you, you're not yet that version of yourself. 
when my child, my our youngest child, our daughter was in primary school, Avis Elementary Primary School in Dada, in, in Massachusetts. One day I went for one of those their open days, and the minder said, when you are young, you learn to read. When you are old, you read to learn. People stop at the point of learning to read. They just finish university because they, they force them to read to pass. They come out, they stop reading. No, it's now time to read, to learn. If you're going to change your world, you have to start reading to learn. You have to start reading to learn, not learning to read, which is where you start life. So you have to make the choice to be a lifelong learner. Commit to personal development. Develop yourself to become the best version of yourself so that you can become the person that can fulfill the purpose that you're created for because there's a potential you have. Unless that potential is developed and applied by applying pressure on yourself, by working, you may never see the best of you and the results you so desperately desire. Is there a thinking difference between an average man in the West and an average man in Africa? What, the, what, what differentiates their thoughts? I don't think there's a thinking difference. I live in the West. I work there. You go to a shop to buy something. Maybe it's towel. When you leave that segment and go to where they're selling shoes, the man selling towel will not help you. If you ask me a question about shoes, he said he doesn't know. They are so insular in their thinking. They just they think in silos in the West. But they go, but they are deeper in the sense of research, specialization, and so on and so forth. If, if there's any difference, the difference is that the West, you go to school, they teach you, you apply. In Africa, they teach you, they don't apply. They are very interested in certificates. I have, I have a master's in engineering, engineering management. What do you do? You're a mechanical engineer. The person fixing your car is a roadside in, uh, mechanic. You, are, you have a PhD, mechanical engineering, or, or a master's degree. Somebody fixing your car, you didn't go to school. Why is that? Why, why is that? Why, why, why that gap? What's going on? So I think the difference is that we live in a, an environment where we need to apply more. More pragmatic, more practical. We need to study our environment more. Take advantage of our environment. You can't have water all around you and lack power. In the West, they will resolve it. You can't live, we can't live in a place that is waterlogged beside the ocean and there are no water running in people's homes. Why? Why is that? So, let me give you an example of nation building thought. In the US, where we live, we don't lock our doors. We go out, the doors are open. We come back, the doors are open. In Nigeria, the proof you are wealthy is the size height of your fence. But the reason you need the fence is because of lack of security because you are richer than your neighbors. In America, nobody really cares how rich you are. The bigger the car you drive, the more, the, the more monthly bills you pay for the car. So people know that they don't care. You drive your car, drive a Range Rover, you pay the bill. It's your business. But it's not a status symbol. The purpose of a car is to carry from point A to B. In Nigeria, it's not the purpose. The purpose is to oppress your neighbor. Yes, you buy cars you can't afford. Listen, can I say this to you? Thinking, you're talking about thinking patterns. When I go to South Africa, I see cars I've never seen in Nigeria. They are so small. But they have small cars because they are small parking spaces. In Nigeria, there are people that have four-wheel drive. They don't have house. The car they drive, there's no space to park it where they live. But they will still buy that car because their mindset is not functionality. They are thinking how to appear to be rich even though they're not rich. To appear to oppress their neighbor even though it's not necessary. So you see somebody that has financial issues that you say he buys a car that there's no space to park the car. The car is bigger than his house. He's inside the car from time to time. But the house where he lives is not comfortable. It doesn't mean it is there. But once he's inside the car, he appears to be wealthy. He wears clothes that make him look rich. But the reason you know he's not rich, his books don't balance. See owing bills school fees and so on and so forth. So the mindset of Africa is not functional, it's oppressive, it's not realistic, it's not practical. I, my children went to a school many years ago. I struggled to pay fees. It was not a lot of money. It's school. Average of one million per term for the children. I struggled. But 
I made sure I paid all my fees. When they left the school and traveled away abroad, I went back to the school and said, what's the bill? What's the balance? They told me I negotiated. I paid every day. They said, I'm the first parent to pay off his bills. But that's one the story I'm telling you. Let me tell you. They used to stay to us. There are many parents here who are owing school fees, but they've gone on summer holiday. And they come back and their children are present, their classmates, but they are owing school fees. The mindset. Now, the, now, most people, like you just give an example now, most people like everything of the West, they go out there, they travel, they take their children there for holidays and sure. all of that and everything, or they send their children to school. But barely you see any people from the Western world send their children to Africa, especially Nigeria. So do you think it's about the environment or it's about mindset? Because people, everything about the West, that's what people want to do. They want to buy things of the West, they want to import things of the West, they want everything that appeases to them regarding the West, that is what they want to do. So do you think it's about mindset or do you think it's about environment? Both. Mindset. An average American who travels abroad is going home, doesn't buy anything. Everything he needs is in America. What is he going to buy? Egyptian cotton is the highest quality of cotton maybe in the world. There's more Egyptian cotton. I'm talking about shirt. White shirt, Egyptian cotton. There are more of it in, in, in America than Africa itself. Cocoa beans. It's from cocoa beans you make chocolate. In the process of chocolate production, what I call it, the ecosystem, the raw material is the cheapest part. The processed material that doesn't have as much nutritional value is more expensive than the raw material. So the people that are processing cocoa, the rest of the world own 90% of, of the product of cocoa. And Africa is support, exporting the beans and maybe owns 10% or less. But the mindset is this. The problem with environment and mindset, why I say it's both, is that the average Nigerian mindset, as it is today, is not proud of its Nigeria and product. Nigerians travel heavy when they come back to Nigeria. They buy everything. Most of the time, the planes don't carry, the, they don't tell Nigerians. I came back a few days ago, excuse me, from Maputo. Even Maputo in Mozambique. I don't know what it was, but the, whatever the flight was, they didn't carry all the luggage, but they didn't tell anybody. It's when you land, because people are carrying three suitcases, four suitcases, five suitcases. The Americans average one. What are you buying? We are buying everything because we make nothing. Mm. Not making something is a mindset, it's a failed leadership that does not produce, that buy, that imports everything. That's a problem in the economic process of nation building. Yes, you can't survive on imports. You have to make something. Anybody that goes to market that is buying without selling will die poor in mediocrity. Mm. Every time you buy, you must sell to survive on an individual level. And on a national level, if you buy, if you buy, you must sell. If you don't sell, you're in trouble. And you can't be selling raw material. That's the lowest level of development. You can't be selling your raw material. When you sell raw material, it's poverty mentality. You must process your raw to the finished product to sell. So, environment, why are we not making things? We're making, manufacturing more things in Nigeria in the 60s and 70s than we're doing today. Most of the industries are shut down. Why? Failed leadership. Leadership that did not understand leadership. They didn't accept responsibility for leadership. They are telling stories about power. They didn't solve it. They, could, they shouldn't have left office without solving it. They should have given their whole life to the process. Look what you said. What do you have? You say you have a transformed Singapore. What, do, what did it cost me? My life. You say I'm a dictator. The way it says he was in office for so long. They said, oh, he's a dictator. They said, no. What do you have? A transformed nation. What did it cost me? My life. Most leaders in Africa didn't offer their life. They came to take. They didn't come to give. Some people, their first assignment was to be governor of a state. Their first real job, real job. It may look exaggerated, but I'm telling you, it's, it's properly true for some. That the real thing. So, people without track record should not be allowed to ascend to leadership. Track record of personal accomplishment and personal integrity. Okay, but coming back. So, the point I'm now endeavoring to make is that there's also an environmental factor. When you're not making things, people have to buy. But it shouldn't be so bad that people are importing apples from London to eat for a for, 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 for weekend in Abuja. That kind of mindset is terrible. Now, do you think it's mindset when uh, people... Because one of the challenges we have in this uh, country is that most people have this challenge of uh, uh, this person is a Christian, 
we are Muslim, uh, we are Muslims, or this person is Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo. I think, do you think our diversity has become our problem, or you think that should have helped us, or do you think it's mindset that is affecting us? Because you're talking about leadership, bad leadership. I think our diversity has one of has been one of the reasons why we have been producing bad leaders because people don't want to put in the best. People are just putting based on ethnicity, tribe, religion, and all of that. So is it is it our, is, has our diversity become a cause for us? Or do you think it's mindset that is the problem? Do you think Nigeria is more diverse than America? People came from all, all over Europe to, to create a nation. All over. They're not from one country. Do you think Nigeria is more diverse than Europe? So somebody can make argument, oh, that those nations, they divide into smaller nations. Singapore is a miniature Nigeria. Two million people, between two and three million. Look where you solve diversity problems. It doesn't come up at the national stage. There are no Muslims or Christians. Keep it to yourself. I have a Singaporean who was born in Singapore, grew up there. I worked with him. We worked with him as a group a few years ago. He came to because his name is Dr. Victor Ko. He has three end master's degrees. He came here for a lecture in a Bible school and they, he had a free Saturday. And we offered it to him as AMP Network. He came to speak to us. It was a packed room. I spent time with him beyond the session. I asked him, what's the role of Christianity and religion in your country? He says that our founding prime minister, Lee Kuan Yew, didn't give room for that. He said, you don't pray in the public. Because if you pray, you have to pray now in Muslim and Christian. He said, no, don't do any of them. It's religion. He said, keep your prayer to yourself. Show your prayer by your results. I said, what about Christian? He said, the Christian civil servants were some of the best. He said, don't do it by Christianity. Do it by the effort and the result you produce. Show by your results that you have a work with God. So here's where I would say, diversity is meant to be a strength. I come from a family of 10, nine surviving siblings. Being diverse has been a blessing, not a setback. We are different. No two people are the same. So I'm, I'm born in the East. They call this how East today. I came to Lagos since 1985. I've lived there. I pay my taxes here. This is now 2022. Why am I still from the East and not from Lagos? It's mindset. It's small mindedness. We are too small. We are small minded. Tribalism. Let me say something to you. In Abuja, I've gone to Abuja. I've never really lived there, but I've spent long days, long hours there doing some work here and there. Listen, in Abuja, everybody comes from Kaduna, Abia, Eboy, Ondo, um, Oshun. Nobody comes from Nigeria. Nigeria is an orphan in Abuja. Why is that? Why is Nigeria not? Why is nobody fighting for Nigeria? Why are people still fighting for Lagos, for Nasrawa, for Niger, and nobody fighting for Nigeria? It's a mindset. It's low-level thinking. Low-level thinking. It's scarcity mentality. What changes a nation is higher levels of thinking. In America, they don't say I'm from California. When during politics, if you live in California, you move to Massachusetts. That means you live in Los Angeles, you move to Boston. After a few, you say, I used to be from California. I'm not Bostonian. They will ask you, where were you from originally? They don't say, because I'm born in Omaha, I must die in Omaha. That level of thinking cannot get us where we're going. But it's leadership challenge. How can that change? Leadership, the right leader that is not afraid of death. People don't want to pay the price of leader. Sometimes the leader has to die in order to achieve results. You have to throw your life at it. You have to give your all. You can't be going, you can't be aspiring to be president of a country like Nigeria because of solving your personal problems and becomes of status symbol if you are not willing to pay the price. You can't do it for selfish gain. You can't even do it because it's your turn. No! How can we change that mindset shift if people still based on this mindset that's still electing the bad leaders? It's a process. Growth, nation building is a process. Nigeria is evolving. I don't know how old you are. 20 years ago, I didn't vote. I was 30, 30 plus. I didn't, I didn't even come out. We came out to talk. We didn't vote. It didn't count. The votes now count. Nigeria is evolving. The evolution is so... Um, what's the right word for it? I would say marginal. But it's evolving at a rate that you have to look for it to find it. Lagos is changing. Lagos has changed. It's not changing just because of the governors who have been in office. It's also changing because of changing times. The point I'm making is that Nigeria is evolving. Where we are today is not where we were yesterday. Change is happening. So how can an individual make a shift in mindset? By making the choice to change. It's a choice. 
You, you make the choice to change before you see the result. You change your thinking. You don't see result and change your thinking. You change your thinking and see result. If you change the way you think, listen, I don't have any problem. That doesn't mean I have all the money I need in the world, all the things I need, but I don't have any problem. Why? The way I think, I don't, I've not had a boring day more than two years. A day that was boring. No. It's a mindset. Every day I wake up, look, even to start my day, after I've meditated, I just send messages out. Ten people. My phone is buzzing. Big things are happening. How can I be bored? There's so much to do. Even when I woke up this morning, I went outside, I saw cars moving. I knew that this country is moving forward. There's life. For people, when they see their same problem, no. When I see human beings, I see solution. Those people, they must eat. They must brush their teeth. They must wear shirts. The multinational company, what do they do for a living? Toothpaste. Milo. Sugar. Towel. Toothbrush. Why? 200 million Nigerians must brush their teeth. They must eat. They must eat. They must do this. That's how they reason. They go and make those things people need. How can you live in Nigeria and say there's a problem? You don't have money. What do you do for a living? Fry Akara. There are enough people that want to eat Akara that don't need to fry it. How much talent do you need to fry Akara? Do something with your life. Go and walk without pay. Don't be dying in your room. Don't wake up and hang out. Adulman is devil's workshop. Get up and go. Go work with our pace. Somebody says, it's easier said than done. Start from somewhere. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Mm. Do you think Africa is still under the influence of colonialism or they are free from it? Really? They're not free from it. Nigerians. I know many Nigerians. Not many. I know some Nigerians who have come to Nigeria with Oyibo people who were the assistants. When they go to a meeting, the Nigerians will be looking to the assistants, not knowing that they're assisting the Nigerian. I'll be talking to them and ignore the Nigerian. Because we have a problem. The problem is that we adore the white man. Even when they are... They are Chinese here that didn't go to school. They come to work in Nigeria. They don't have education. They are work construction. People respect them more than PhDs. It's a mindset too. Mindset. Yes. The mindset is an inferiority mindset. That thinks the other person is better because his skin is white. If you don't change that... It's personal first. Before it, Look, the leader can break it at the national level. I'm saying first by yourself. I've lived in the West. I've gone to school with them. They're not better than me. By the way, nobody anywhere in the world is better than you. Change that mindset of inferiority, inferiority complex. Don't be exhorting people. Talk about what they're doing. What I talk about, look, I've changed so much by changing my mindset and the result I show you. Start with yourself. Then start with your children, with your family. Then start with your community. Change. Yes. What is the biggest mindset shift, one or two, that you can tell someone? to do, to change from it? Two or three. Yes, two or three. Number one, nobody's better than you. Hmm. Nobody's better than you. Hmm. There are people that know what you don't know, but they know it because they know it. If you know it, you do what they do. Wow. Number three, number two, anything anybody has done anywhere in the world, you can do it if you know what they do. I can give you even more. Number three, anything significant somebody has done, not only can you do it, but you have to be willing to pay the price because they did it by paying the price. Don't think that's, that they did it because it's easy. They did it because they were willing to pay a price. If you're willing to pay the price, you can do it. Number four, commit to lifelong learning. Commit to lifelong learning. Number five, I will put it like this. There's no shortcut. Pay the full price and get the full result. Pay the full price and get the full results. The next one, number six, it can be anything you want to be if you're willing to pay the price. You have to study. You can build anything, especially if God is with you and God is with you. Wow, wow. So, in order to finalize it, what, what can you define as the freedom of the mind? When the mind, when someone has the free mind or uh, is free from the mind or from any form of bad thinking, what can you define? How can someone develop? A free mind. I don't know whether you can develop a free mind, but what I can say, well, I, let me tell you why I say that. The bird will always fly over your head. To develop a free mind is almost like saying, what can I do so that the bird will not fly over my head? Is whether you allow him to build a nest on your head is the problem. He can fly all he likes, but he can't come here and perch and build a nest over your head. So, choices. Anybody can be tempted, but don't accept the temptation. 
There's a level of freedom you will experience when you find your purpose in life. That there's no other way to find that freedom. When you know why you were born and embrace it. And realize that this is what you can be the best in the world at. And you say, I'm going to run towards it. There's a level of freedom you will never know except you do it that stage. And it's not difficult because you are, you are purpose yourself. Listen, you came into this world to fill a purpose. Now you say, I don't know my purpose. What do you have? Moses had a rod. He was a shepherd. What do you have? I can talk. I'm a preacher. I love to travel. I'm a missionary. Okay, we'll, go, we'll jump into that. So, but is there any final word you have to say again, mindset? Yes. Anybody can change the way they think by changing what they are reading, what they are seeing, what they are associating with. What you think is what you see. What you think is what you have read. What you think is your environment. If you change those, how do you change it? If you listen to something long enough, to change your life forever. If you see something long enough, to change your life forever. If you associate with the right people wise, well, long enough, if you associate with the wise, become wise yourself. Never lose an opportunity to go to a place or see something or read something that can expand you and change your life. Mm. Perfect, perfect. So thank you very much for this particular episode too. And it's quite enlightening and very mind blowing. So guys, that is it on mindset. I believe that this indeed will definitely change your mind. So the next episode is going to be on discovering your purpose and fulfilling your dream. And here you talk about purpose and all of that. So we're going to talk about it. In case you're doing something, you do not know whether it's your purpose or what you're called to do or what, why you are doing it. In the, in the next one, we are going to discuss it practically on how you can discover your purpose and actually fulfill it. So depending on the time you're watching this video, that one will grab link it here. So you're going to watch it or check in the description. So that's it on mindset. Once again, if you're yet to subscribe to this channel, hit the subscribe button, turn on the post notification, and share the video with someone. My name is Ben, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.